Hello, hi, and good morning, my loves. Welcome back. Today is another day which I have picked to vlog for you guys. I think we're gonna go on another walk because that is all there is to do these days. No, but in all seriousness, I, I actually need to do a walk because I've not been getting out of the house that much and I feel like I'm becoming weak. <laughs> so I need, I, I, I require a walk like a dog. Um, so we're going to do that and probably ramble on about stuff, probably books. I am really, really hungry because I haven't eaten yet today because I've been getting ready and it's taken me ages. I'm hungry, so I'm going to go and eat and then I will get back to you. Hello, so we've been on the road for a little while now. Um, we're on our way to New Forest. I'm going to just hit a few spots. Uh, I have been before, I think a very long time ago. I feel like it's the sort of place that we went on a school trip. So yes, you guys know we love trees. We love a forest. So that's where we're headed. Um, do you have anything else to do? Well, I did have a blueberry muffin for breakfast, which was very nice. Uh, it stated my hunger, even though it was, you know, it's not the most nutritious breakfast ever, but it was nice. But anyway, we are almost there. drive than a walk today because I was feeling a bit tired and also it's quite a big area and we managed to see like a large amount of it and scout some locations maybe for future shoots um the like moorland bits looked really beautiful so we're back home now we had to we had to come home because there was going to be traffic and then we had bits and bobs to do at home I can make you um oh it's bake off tonight <gasps> It's on at 8.15. Just a little shout out to the best brownies in the world, by the way. If you are looking to treat yourself or someone else, these are truly delicious, like the best brownies. I don't even like brownies that much because most of them are subpar, but these are really nice. 
Okay, before I change out my jeans, and apologies for filming on my phone, but I didn't bring my camera upstairs and I'm not going all the way downstairs to get it. <laughs> but I wanted to show you this jacket whilst I was wearing real life human clothes, because how incredible is it? I got this recently from Matches. It's an acne jacket thing. They often have these oversized shirt, jacket, overshirt type things. Um, but the colours in this are just like my perfect colours, as you can tell from the colour of my room. It's like a nice turquoisey, bluey colour. Greens in there, browns in there. It's unlike anything I really have. Um, I have a lot of checked items, shirts, whatever. I was obviously wearing one today, but nothing in this sort of colourway. Um, I think it looks gorgeous over black outfits, as I, as you can see right now. And I'm in love with it. And I can't wait to wear jumpers under it because I feel like it will really work with like thicker items under it as well to really bulk you out. And then you can have like little jeans like I've got on here. Um, I just think it's a cool look. So I just wanted to show you this <laughs> um, before I change. Here we go, guys. Oh, <coughs> it's the music. It's the tiny baby that must be probably in her late teens. Hi Mavs, you are slightly wonky, which I apologise for, and also it looks like my books are much better lit than me, so I may go in and out of focus. Watch Fake Off, it was such a good episode because it was completely bizarre. Um, they made busts out of cakes, if you saw it you'll never forget it. Um, it was scary, but also hilarious and just nice, nice to feel a sense of normality um, for once because I realised yesterday via my own Snapchat stories that uh, Strictly was on this time last year and it practically brought me to tears. <laughs> I was like, I just want to feel a little bit normal and I know Strictly will be on later this year, but it was just a moment where I was like, oh. And obviously Bake Off is usually on in August. And I've been wondering to myself, like, why am I so obsessed at the moment with wanting to, like, watch seasonal films, even though I've been banning myself from doing it. Watch these, watching seasonal films, watching se seasonal TV shows, I can't speak. And I realised it's probably because I'm not getting that dose that I usually would just from things that I usually expect to happen happening. Um, so that's probably why my brain is confused and my timing is off. So I'm very pleased that Bake Off's back on because it does just feel like something normal from life. Even though life is still very not normal. And that's such a small silly stupid little thing but it is the small things that are getting us through at the moment so yes anyway guys yesterday i went to marlebone for an appointment and i couldn't resist going to daunt books they have that iconic daunt books bookshop there you may have seen it if you're a big fan of looking up pretty bookshops especially in London and I picked up a few books even though I'm sort of not supposed to be buying books at the moment but I could not help myself so I did pick up a few um so I got the new Daughters of Africa I did show these on my stories by the way so I'm sorry if you've already seen them but I got the new Daughters of Africa anthology which is an anthology of I think it's over 200 women writers um, of African descent. Okay, so I didn't know this. I didn't know if it was short stories or what. It's autobiogra autobiography, memoir, letters, short stories, novels, poetry, drama, humour, journalism, essays and speeches. So lots of different types of writing um, by lots of different writers, women writers of African descent, which is really exciting. And basically there was a, there was a Daughters of Africa anthology, which I think was released... I want to say in the 90s, um, which I would also like to buy at some point, um, but this is the new release. I can't remember when it came out, I think it was fairly recently. Um, so I saw this and I was like, yes, 2020, um, but the original one, okay, the hardback came out in 2019, but it's new, it's fairly new, um, 
but it still does cover everything from the yeah pre-1900 all the way through to now I guess to see Marza Mengiste's name sorry if I'm saying that wrong reading currently reading The Shadow King which is shortlisted for the booker by her when I say reading I actually haven't even started it but uh, it, you are resting on it currently um, I haven't read today even though I have been pretty good on my reading um, I just haven't had time today amongst my busy evening of watching Bake Off um, so yes I haven't actually read today but I think I can confirm I am truly out of my reading slump like I said in my last video I will let you know what I think of The Shadow King anyway and what I think of that anthology I think it's something that I'm probably going to dip in and out of at some point I'll kind of start reading it probably and work my way through it slowly whilst reading other things because it is a hefty tomb um, anyway <laughs> Right, on to um, this. This is Isabel Wilkerson's The Warmth of Other Suns. It's about the great migration north from the Jim Crow South to um, the North by African Americans. And it's a non-fiction book. Um, she, I think she won a Pulitzer for this. And I think she's got a book coming out this year or has very recently come out, um, which is another kind of long form non-fiction book. Um, I can't remember what it's about, but she's kind of iconic and I've been wanting to read this for a little while. So looking forward to reading this. Um, from what I've read about it, it is not only informative, but it's also very well written, which is all you can hope for in a non-fiction. Um, and I also just love these editions. Um, I don't know, there's something very satisfying and kind of old school about them. So very much looking forward to this one and um, I'm sort of running out, well not running out, but I'm sort of running out of fresh non-fiction that's on my shelves ready to be picked up so um, yes I picked that one up and also I think she wrote a section for The Vibe this time which I just read and um, liked very much but anyway. Next we have Perfume by Patrick Suskind. I don't think I've ever had such a strong reaction to a book when I've put it on my stories or something like that with everybody saying that they love this book or that it's their favourite book or that they're so excited for me to read it so I am now super excited to read it. I do sort of hope that it lives up to that. I'm wor I always worry when I get really excited for a book because you never know if it's going to fulfil your expectations but I am really excited about it I watched the film many 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 years ago when it came out um, or soon thereafter I was definitely probably too young to watch it at the time um, and I looked it up the other day and it's got pretty trash reviews but I actually remember quite liking the film it's got an extremely unsettling atmosphere something about it's just stuck with me maybe if I watched it now I would think it was pretty bad but I don't know anyway um, it is about a man growing up, okay I'm just going to read you the blurb because my brain is clearly, clearly not working this evening, I don't know what's wrong with me. Okay, Jean-Baptiste is abandoned on the filthy streets of 18th century Paris as a baby, but grows up to discover he has an extraordinary gift, a sense of smell more powerful than any other humans. Gradually he learns how to exploit this gift in the art of creating the most sub sublime perfumes in France, yet there is one odour he cannot capture scent of an innocent young virgin. In order to perfect his experiments, he must have this final ingredient at any cost. So obviously, <laughs> I mean, it sounds a little bit questionable. <laughs> I don't actually know when this was published. Um, nonetheless, I think it's got that atmosphere that I'm looking for. Okay, 1985, yeah. First published in Germany in 85. So basically, the reason I bought this one specifically is because I asked in my stories, for you guys to give me spooky season book recommendations. I will talk about this more in the now, what, I, what is now gonna be a full dedicated video to my October TBR and a few spooky season recommendations from me because I got so excited about all your recommendations, about thinking about reading seasonally. But yes, I'll talk about all of that more in that video, but this came highly recommended for, because obviously it's about a murderer. 
So, you know, we'll start there. Reading the long man book along list is um, an intense experience, I think, always. Um, it's very literary. And you guys know I do like and read quite a lot of genre fiction as well. So um, it's been a lot of lit, lit, lit I, can't, I can't speak, literary fiction, which I do really enjoy and I do really like. But sometimes I just need a rest. I feel like at the moment, if you can't tell from the way I am <laughs> struggling to articulate myself, um, my brain needs a little bit of a rest at the moment. I need a little bit of relief from all the literary fiction, so I thought it'd be really nice to read seasonally. But again, I'm getting off topic because I want to talk about all of that in that video and not this video, um, but that's why I picked Perfume up and I'm very excited to read it. Okay, final book is this, which again, I have on my want to read list. The other day I went on my Goodreads and, well I say the other day, I mean the whole weekend, um, I had about 550 books on my want to read list on Goodreads. And I knew, knowing what I know now about my reading, about what I like, that I wanted to take quite a lot of those books off that list because it's quite useful to have that list as just like a base, especially for contemporary books I find. It's not got all the backlist books that I want to read on it, but for contemporary books um, it's quite useful. I think it's useful for people to go on there and to know what I want to read as well for people close to me in my life. And I just wanted to slim down that want to read list. I think I took um, over a hundred books off it. It took me ages because I had to go through all the books that I wasn't sure about, read all the blurbs, read all the reviews, and decide whether I wanted to keep it on the list or not. <laughs> but anyway, it gave me a good reminder of what's on there. Um, and yes, it was a much needed thing for me to do, I think, because I had a lot of stuff on there that I know now that I just don't think I would get on with very well. Some books are great, but they're just not for you as well. But anyway, this is on there, I think. <laughs> I think I remember it being on there. Um, it's called The Boundless Sea, A Human History of the Oceans by David Abulafia. Um, so another non-fiction, again, like I said, I am slowly um, whittling down my non-fiction to read on my shelves. So I bought this. Um, first of all, the cover is just gorgeous. I looked at it and was like, shall I wait for a big fat paperback to come out? And then I was just like, whatever. <laughs> I want, I want it. I can't resist. Um, so this is about just exactly what it says on the tin. It's about seas and oceans. It says on the blurb, it begins with the earliest seafaring societies, the Polynesians, um, and ends with the giant liners and container ships of today, which still conduct 90% of world trade by sea. Um, and I think the book makes a point of, it says, breaking from Eurocentric approaches, which um, also signaled to me that I'm hoping this book will be a little bit self-aware about its context. Um, you know, sometimes you worry with these big fat histories of something as huge as the sea that it's all going to be very Eurocentric um, but yes I like that that's in the blurb hopefully the book will fulfill that it's got great reviews and I'm very excited to read it it's just the kind of geeky thing that I enjoy at the moment so that is my little book call you guys I have got some more books coming because of the whole spooky season reading list so I did pick up a few extra books for that. I said in my stories, and I promise that I am going to do this, I am going to shop my shelves to a degree. I've got a list of books from my existing shelves that I'm going to read that I've been meaning to read for a while. So I didn't buy a full new reading list for October, but I did pick up a few that I wanted to read. Sorry about that big long ramble. Um, I'm going to get ready for bed now. So I suppose that I will love you and leave you because I probably don't have much more to add to your day. But yes, I think I'm about four books away from the end of the booker long list, um, which I'm quite excited about and means I will hopefully definitely be finished before the winner is announced. Um, I think I have a couple more shortlisted books to read. Anyway, so 
I will get back to you with that in my September books and maybe give you a little bit of my own winner um, but also maybe my winner prediction which may be different um, and maybe my own little shortlist as well who knows but anyway you guys I'm gonna go thank you so much for watching today and I will see you again very soon